This is the Pursuit of Wellness podcast, and I'm your host, Mari Llewellyn. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Pursuit of Wellness podcast. I'm joined today with Fee Fiddle Fiddle Fi. Fiddle Fee. Back at it. <laughs> back at it again. Um, do you want to know why I'm late? Why are you late? A few reasons. Okay. So the day started great. Mm-hmm. Woke up at 5.30. I worked out first because Arnold doesn't wake up till 7, I've realized. So I can get an hour workout, then come home, wake him up, take him on his walk, give him breakfast. And then I was like, ooh, I think I have time because... I'm in my sourdough era right now, as I think everyone knows. Like I keep posting about my sourdough. I'm on my second loaf and I followed a different recipe. So I've actually made two loaves in my lifetime. The first one came out really, really good in LA. Second one I thought was good. You tried it. I tried it yesterday. It was very good. I liked it, but the shape wasn't... It's a little hard. It was a little... Yeah, well, you were on day two. Okay. (laughs) Um, But I wanted to try the first recipe again and something happened and I dumped my dough out this morning to roll it into its shape. And it's so sticky, it got everywhere. Like it got all over the counter, all over the cutting board. Like I made like a full mess. And I was like- more flour. I added more flour, but it was so sticky. Mm. And I was fully kneading it and it was all over my body. It's still all over my nails. Like it was all over the kitchen. I'm 10 minutes into trying to fix it and I'm like, for fuck, like I'm going to be late for the podcast. So I scrapped the whole thing, literally threw it in the trash. I was like, this loaf isn't working. Run into the closet. And I had one of those mornings where I literally could not pick an outfit. Like everything I put on my body looked horrible. So now I'm in this like weird pink sweatsuit. (laughs) I think you look cute. I was struggling with that today too. I was like running late from my workout and had like 30 minutes to get ready. And the whole way home, I'm like, what do I want to wear today? What do I want to wear today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like nothing looks good. Yeah. Work out. You look great. Thank you. I, I feel... You look I, cute. I look like the mean girl's mom. You're giving like... Uh, what are those powder puff girls? Buttercup. No. Peach spice? No. What the... <laughs> Who the hell is peach spice? Buttercup bubbles. And... um, Buttercup bubbles... Is the one evil? No. That's blossom. Butter- blossom. You're blossom, blossom. 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 Okay. What did that Blossom? I said blossom. <laughs> blossom and jetsam. Okay, that was fucking up. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> that was my morning. I was confused when you said you were running late because I saw you posted that you were at the gym at 6.30. I know. And I'm like, I'm confused how she's running late at 9, but it's okay. No, I know. And also the dogs were just being insane. Our men were running together this morning. Do you know that? Our men? Yeah. Oh, wait, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Kenny hasn't answered me all morning and now I know why. Like literally I was leaving and I'm like, where are you? No answer. He's with my husband. Oh, (laughs) I forgot he was running this morning. So from the gym, I dropped Greg at the Lauren Hotel Okay. And they went on a group run. Right, like they a met up massive, in the parking lot. Yeah, yes, in the parking okay. lot with Kenny, the other Kenny. Yes. Your Kenny. Kenny Hansen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My Greg. And they ran four miles this morning. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And I drove past Greg on the way home, back here. Well, thank you for letting me know where my boyfriend is. That's I okay. I had no idea where he was this morning. Yeah, Greg goes, I'm meeting both Kennys. I was like, oh, great. Nice. Love it. So they went on a run. Cute. I love that for them. I know. Like, should we run? <laughs> Hell no. Literally yesterday, Kenny and I walked. Did you walk the bike and trike last, yeah, last night? Uh, hike no. And hike? Oh, we did. And I was, oh, yes, I did. Oh, you did? Okay. A little bit, but not around the lake. Okay, so we walked around the lake last night. So it was so nice out after I got home. We did an hour walk. It was amazing with Benny. Every person that ran by. Well, like, once you're just walking on it long enough, it's all runners. But, like, everyone, me and Kenny were, like, not, like, critiquing everyone's running. <laughs> but, like, we were watching everyone run by. And it's so interesting to see the array of runners. Like, people that, like, look like they're just floating. Like, it's the easiest thing ever. And then people that are obviously, like, maybe it's new to them and they're huffing and puffing. But I literally, at the end, said to Kenny, like, you will not catch me running. Like, I'm just not a running girly. It is not made for my body. I wish I was. I was watching girls run with their dogs and I was like, couldn't be me. I can't picture you running. It's not, it's not my body. Yes, some people (laughs) carry such a fast pace. Yeah. I see people running fast, holding a conversation. Yeah. I think that's insane. 
I think some people just know how to breathe. I really think it comes down to like biology and your body anatomy. And like, yeah. I think some people, not to say that you couldn't learn to run. I know there's plenty of people that like train train and have learned. And I actually, before the pandemic, got up to running eight miles for a half marathon and like never in a million years did I think I could do that. But like, even so, every day after it like hurt my body. Mm -hmm. Like there are people that run every day and like love it. And it feels amazing. They're like, it's like you fork, never me. <laughs> Eight miles, I'm like, this sucks <laughs> for eight miles, so. I don't know if I could do eight. I've dabbled with jogging and I've had the moment where I'm like, oh, this is euphoric and I love it. But I jog really, really slow. Like I'm either sprinting, which mm -hmm. I think I'm a pretty good sprinter just because of my, my legs, or I'm running really slow. So even if I were to do one of those group runs that the boys did this morning, I'd be f so far behind. Like I'd be miles behind because I like to do a slow little run. Arnold loves running, as in my puppy, guys. He loves running with Greg. He's done like two miles with Greg before. Yeah. And then he hits the limit. The man has a lot of energy. Which one? Both. both. <laughs> I was talking about Arnold, but so does Greg. So both. both. So Fee and I are going to give you guys some updates and like fill you in on our lives and like interesting things that have been happening to us and, you know, new things we've been trying. And then we're going to listen to your voice messages, which we love doing and giving you guys advice and answering questions. One of the first things I wanted to talk to you about was the Megan Fox interview. Oh, so good. On Call Her Daddy. So good. Yeah. Like for some reason, I don't usually, and this is no shade, to Alex Cooper. I think she's fantastic. She's crushing it. But I don't always run to a celebrity interview. Like, I don't really care. But when I saw Megan Fox, I was like, I need to listen to this because I'm so curious about her. And I feel like she is very different to how you'd imagine, don't you think? She is like, and people might bash me for saying this, like, I think she is like very intellectual and deep and like sees things on like a totally different level than a lot of people, like much deeper. Mm -hmm. Like I know she can be a little woo-woo, like she talks about her sign and the moon and all that kind of stuff, which like, you know, to each their own. But I I did the same thing. I ran, I watched it walking on my treadmill for an hour and a half. And I was like, I'm just going to walk the whole time I watched this. It was a nice little yeah. evening activity. But it was so good. Do you know what's interesting? Does she give you I mean, maybe I see this because of my previous diagnosis, but do you see like BPD vibes in her? She said something about like having, did she say something about having like? I think her dad had borderline. Yeah, but then I feel like she said something like, sometimes I'm like this, but sometimes I'm, then I'm like this. Like she said something, I, I wish I remembered what it was, but she said something that was very much like, some days I feel like I'm this and some days I feel like I'm this. Yeah. And, like, and yes, I could see, I could see some sort of yeah. something going on there. Something I really related to that she said that I feel like many of us could probably relate to, but she is undoubtedly like one of the most attractive people in the planet. And to me, her perception or the PR I've seen about Megan Fox is she's so hot. She's the most beautiful woman in the world, sex symbol, her perception of herself is completely different. Mm -hmm. And she said from the beginning of the interview, as a child, she didn't perceive, like when she looked in the mirror, she was like, that's not me. I, she never connected with the way she looked. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I've had issues like connecting with who I am and the way I look. And like even with acne, just... I don't know, just like having an internal struggle, yeah. whether it's like body dysmorphia or perceiving yourself in inaccurately. Like I talk a lot about that with my therapist. Like, am I really perceiving myself the way I actually am? You know, and fighting with that insecurity. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, no, she, and I loved her whole, her like concept about, I forget exactly how, how she phrased it. Like, Wait, like, I just want to clarify. I was not saying that I'm like the hottest person in the world. Oh, <laughs> I didn't think you were saying that. No, I'm kidding. I just sort of clarify. But I am. Um, no, I'm just no, saying yes. like... Yes, the the whole like self-perception. Yes, yes, yes. No, I get that. But I thought it was so interesting how she... And this is so true. Like, and to to your point, like she doesn't... She didn't view herself like that. But when she talks about like how doing the first Transformers, like she became this kind of like sex icon and all this stuff. And that the media like built her up into this thing that like she wasn't trying to do like it's like that was the role she played on the show mm. and then she, I, it seemed like she almost had to like 
become that character. Like she said in between the first and second movie, she got her boobs done. And like, I feel like she like didn't know who she was. So she just became what everyone was telling her she is. Yeah. And then she's like, and then I became what everyone told me I should be. And then they like tore me down for doing it. Right. And then I'm like a slut and like I am fake and I have all this plastic surgery. I also love that she talked about all her plastic surgery. Loved. That is what we need in Hollywood. Like, I know the Kardashians have like somewhat addressed it. Like if I think if like Kylie or like one of those girls came on, came on our show. No, like went out and just literally was like, this is what I've had done. Like, I think so many women would like feel so healed from that in a way or like, wow, like. I know. I I won't look like that by doing a thousand squats. Like that literally is impossible. But it's, Megan even said, like when people, especially in the public eye, aren't honest about that kind of stuff and then like push that on other women, it's like, it's it mess. It's so, it's fucked up. <laughs> she made a comment that Kylie has been very transparent about what she's had done. She has not. I was a little confused by that. I mean, maybe she like, maybe she means like her lip filler and stuff, but like, there's a lot of stuff that those people have I know. not addressed. But, I know. But also, I get people not like, it's personal. I just think if you are a public figure like that and women look up to you and there's little girls that want to look like you and then you're being like, I just work out and eat grilled cheese. It's, <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, no. it's so damaging. And I yeah. also appreciated that she kept saying that she has a really small frame and that's just how she is. Yeah. She is like gorgeous with or without plastic surgery, but I felt like that was a really good disclosure. And I thought the topic of society and culture now building people up to a level that they can't even sustain themselves and they undoubtedly come crashing down. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the news now, we've got Jay Shetty, we have Andrew Huberman. I'm not even going to say my thoughts on that. Like, I'm not sure how I feel. Um... But the way that people are built to a level that they they can't keep up with the perception of society. Who people have built them up to be that might not even be them. Right. It's it's unfair and it's like, it's pretty dangerous and it's kind of violent and aggressive. And just hearing from her perspective, I had no idea that, and I want to see what you think about this. In my point of view... I feel like she thinks that she has this horrible public perception and she was bullied by the media and everyone hates her. But from my perspective, I never saw any of that press. Like, I, I've never seen anything bashing her, have you? I feel like it's just the, like, n not as of late, but I also think media back 10 years ago was, like, very different. That's like, true. people, like, you'd see someone in a bikini, they'd be like, whale on the beach. Like, they were so mean. Yeah. So I think more so back then. But even now, like, I feel like, even, you know, E! News or TMZ or whatever, these clips, like, with her and Machine Gun Kelly, it's like they pick the most, like, like the craziest photo of them doing something or saying she's, yeah. like, in a satanic cult and, like, her and MGK, like, drink baby's blood and all this stuff. Like, that's weird. And she was like, I, I, I literally don't do that. Mm. Um, I just think that celebrities are obviously hyper-focused on when their name is mentioned and what people are saying. And in reality, like, no one really believes that stuff. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, but I also think, like, just imagine, like, when you get on your phone and you see, like, one mean comment. Like, one out of hundreds. Like, that probably, like, yeah. it bothers you. And I'm sure she sees a lot more than that. Mm. I thought it was so interesting when she mentioned, like, how, you know, once she got married and, like, left the— She was like, I left the public eye because, like, you guys, like, hated me and were so mean to me. She's like, I disappeared for, like, 10 years. She goes, and then there was, like, this, like, like people almost, like, begging for her to come back and, like, where is she? And she said this phrase. She was like, I was, like, ready to receive my flowers. Like, you guys wanted me to come back and, like, I thought it was going to be different. She's like, and then I came back and it was even worse than before. Yeah. I was just like, oh, like, I can't— I don't know. I, I cannot imagine being in the public eye like that and just like being bashed for who for who you are, but who you were made by. It's it's like who you were made by the public mm -hmm. and then they tear you down for like what they made you. I think it sounds it's awful. So no, it sounds yeah. awful. Yeah. It really does. And even like, you know, I wanted to talk about this anyway, but I just took, and I'm not comparing myself to a celebrity. It's completely different. But I think in a smaller scale, everyone now has a, a slight version of that through social media. So I personally feel like one of the most detrimental things to my mental health 
has been social media. And I think whether that's as a user or the face of a brand or a creator, it's really difficult to learn the boundary between I'm creating and putting out content and over consuming other people's content. Because every time you open the app, it's designed to suck you into everyone's story. You're aware of what everyone's doing at every second of the day. And I'm someone who struggles with comparison. And I just have to be self-aware about that. Um, Because I know you kind of don't struggle in that same way. You feel pretty content with doing, you know, whatever you want to do. But I personally find that if I'm watching other people's stories... I start doubting my day, my skin, my body. It just, it messes with me. So after talking to Mimi um, in our episode together, I decided to take Friday through Monday off, completely deleted social media. Actually, I deleted Instagram. I don't find, first of all, I don't find myself addicted to TikTok. I don't even think to open the app that often. And I also don't find that it like negatively affects my mental health in a weird way because I don't, it's not like, Every, every second of everyone's day, it's just sort of like random. It's also a little more like honest and random stuff versus like Instagrams tends to be like the highlights of people's life, not just like yeah. the weird little stories that people tell on TikTok. Yeah. yeah. And I go on TikTok to like research sourdough. Like I'm not like comparing myself to other people. Deleted Instagram, was completely unaware of what everyone was doing Friday through Monday. We had like a lovely weekend. We went out for Mexican food, all of us with our friends. Um, went to the rodeo. I went horseback riding. I made my sourdough. I was at home. I cooked. Like I really had my dream weekend. And I didn't feel like it was tarnished by social media because I wasn't worried about posting constantly. I wasn't worried about what anyone else was doing. I had the most pure, wholesome, fun weekend. I literally was in heaven. And when it came to Sunday night and I knew I had to re-download it because I had work to do on Monday and things to promote, I like dreaded it. Like I really wish there was a way that I could keep doing my job and showing up for people because I this community is everything. Like I would not be where I am without social media. That's the truth. Mm-hmm. And my career is largely because of social media. I wish there was a way I could keep showing up for everyone and not be on the app, you know? Yeah. And, and now that we have the podcast, I really do feel like this space is very healthy for me. Um, I don't know. I know deleting the app obviously helps, but like maybe Monday through Friday, there's so many, you had one of those apps before that like lock your phone from an app. Opal. For like, like maybe you let yourself be on the app for 30 minutes at nine to post a podcast clip and then like it's locked out the rest of the day. I know. You know what I mean? Because then it like really stops you from like the scrolling part of it. Yeah. But then I don't know. I don't know if even like getting on the 30 minutes in the morning to like post something like triggers, you know, triggers you, you know. Even when I had Opal, I would find myself like, oh, shoot, like I need to get on the app because like things pop up. I bloom, someone like responding. look at a guest, like yeah, yeah. People DMing you. I know. It's, yeah. I'm thinking I might just use your phone when I need to <laughs> and go on my account on your phone. Oh. That's Do you know what I mean? Idea. Yeah. Guys, I have an idea for myself and I've been like fantasizing about this idea. In August, Greg and I are going to Jackson Hole for the whole month, we've decided. We've rented an Airbnb. We're going for the whole month. We're bringing the dogs. Fee and Kenny are going to visit us. We're going to go horseback riding and, you know, Yellowstone and all of that. Um, I'm going to delete social media for the whole month. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dang. I think I need it because I really feel like I haven't not been on it since... 2017. Maybe good for you. I think it'd be a nice little like reset and almost kind of like a a realization. Yeah. I'm worried I wouldn't come back, honestly. Well, it's tough. I know like your whole like the career and Bloom and a lot, but also like Bloom has their own pages and Pow has their own pages. And like, I also feel like people can tune into the podcast. The, yeah. pod, the podcast is not going exactly. anywhere. Yeah. It would just be social. I mean, a lot of people do that. A lot of people take breaks from it. I know. Might be good for you. Anyway, what'd you think of the rodeo? Oh, guys, this rodeo. So it was my first rodeo. It was not, I think Mari had been to a couple before. It was such a cool experience, you guys. I've never been to anything like that. Um, we got there and like first, we were, we were a little bit late because we were enjoying our Mexican food a little too long. Um, <laughs> but we got to the rodeo, went and watched for like an hour. It was like the last couple events. It was so cool. It was really beautiful and like, some parts of it, I'm going to be honest, are a little, like, I don't want to say triggering, but, like, there are some parts that you're like, oh, that I didn't love. But, like, 
at least from what I could tell, like, all the animals were, like, taken care of very well. Like, there was a woman who said something cute. She, like, won the barrel racing. And she was like, I love my horse. And, like, I was just cheering for my horse. And, like, that's why we won. It was really cute. So, love that. It was a really cool the atmosphere. Everyone's outfits, guys, was, it was, it was to die for. And then there was a little carnival after that Kenny and I stayed for. Um, I haven't been to a carnival and I don't even know how long. We ate a funnel cake. It was absolutely incredible. Um, and then Kenny and I played a bunch of games and I won every single game, you guys. I I'm literally did a, a, I did a ring toss over these moving rubber ducks, you guys. I literally look at the guy before I go. He gives me three rings. I look at him. I go, does anyone ever win this? And he like, like laughs at me, throw the ring, lands on the first one. Damn. He looked at me. I was like… So yeah. you left the queen of the carnival. Oh, yeah. I won, like, a lot of stuff. I won Kenny a little sloth. He loves sloths. So I got him a Cute. sloth. And then we played, like, I played a dart game. Three out of three darts. Like, your girl, like, I'm a carnival queen. So, yeah. The rodeo was incredible. I love really rodeos. Cool. That was my third rodeo. I've gone in Jackson Hole. I went to a local one in Orange County. And this was a pretty big rodeo. It was the Austin Rodeo. And... Yeah, I do feel like, and this is a hot take, and I think because I'm into horses, like I understand um, what goes into it behind the scenes and all of the animals in the rodeo are taken care of so, so well, 365 days of the year. And then one or two nights of the year, they compete in the rodeo and people are like, oh my gosh, like it, it seems harsher than it really is. And even like with the baby cows, the way that the men wrangle them and you know tie their feet together, on ranches, that's in order to give them medicine or take care of them correctly. So having that like background knowledge is helpful. And then I also know that the bulls and the the bronking horses, those animals make those men and women a lot of money. So they really take care of them behind the scenes. Um, but it is a little bit rough to watch. I mean, as someone who loves horses, I don't love seeing the, the bronking horses, but still it's there's a culture around it and you have to respect it. And those people work their butts off. And I just think it's beautiful. And I love, love attending. And it really inspired me as a rider to, you know, just, I don't know, riding is such an interesting sport because it takes such commitment. It's so much time. It's so much money. It's hard. Like some days you just don't want to do it. And it really inspired me. And I went riding the next day and it happened to be the windiest day and Bo hadn't been ridden in four days. And when I tell you guys, he was the spiciest I've ever seen him. And when you say spicy, it means like energetic. I couldn't even tap him with my leg without him cantering. But we had the most amazing ride together. Like I feel like I handled it really well. I feel like I'm getting better and better each time I ride. We jumped together. It was awesome. We were flying over the jumps. Unlike one of the last jumps, I leaned forward too early and fell off. And I've fallen off Bo probably three times at this point. I was due for a fall. And I also manifested it for myself because the night before at the rodeo, I was talking to Kenny about how I was due for a fall. And then when I got on Bo, I was like, at least I'm not falling off. Like I said something like that. And my trainer was like, don't say that. And she like knocked on wood. Anyway, fully fell off. It wasn't a bad fall. Um, but the thing is with falling off a horse, you don't feel it in the moment because you're so shocked. Adrenaline. Yeah, like I stood up and I was like, is everyone okay? Where's Bo? Is Bo okay? Like, I'm so sorry, everyone. Because when you're a horse, when you fall off a horse, it runs around the ring and it can spook the other horses. So you kind of F over everyone in the ring. So I apologized to everyone and they were like, why are you apologizing? You just fell on your head. Anyway, um, yeah, I fell backwards and went like that. And when, I, guys, my neck... This whole side of my neck. Does it still hurt? Yeah, it's really bad. Like, I can't sleep on one side because it's stiff and it hurts. I want to get that checked out. I know. Mari texted, like, me and Kenny and Greg in a group, I guess, right after. And, like, I was, like, puttering around cleaning the apartment. So I wasn't looking at my phone. And Kenny's like, Mari fell off her horse. I was like, what? Like, is she okay? He's like, yeah. Like, she sent us a video. I was like, oh, my God. Okay. Like, you freaked me out. Um, yeah, I got it on yeah. video. Yeah, you did. Um she falls off. <laughs> yeah, and I sent it to Kenny because I was like, I was telling Kenny about falling yeah. off a horse, so I sent it to you Kenny guys. Was like, you manifested that for yourself. Literally okay. manifested it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was enjoyable, but it was a great ride. I was so happy. Um, and then another new thing I've been doing is activations. Oh. I did one this morning. How was it? It's awesome. I need to sign up. You need to sign up. Yeah. So guys, 
I had Mimi Bouchard on the show and she's the founder of Superhuman. This is not an ad. But every time I have a guest on, I download their app. I check out what they're doing. Like I really want to understand who they are before I interview them. So I downloaded Superhuman and it's not meditations, but activations, which if you think about it is like an active meditation. So you could be walking, cooking, driving, getting ready, putting your makeup on and you listen to Mimi and she has like a really soft voice with like cinematic music behind it. So for example, the one I did yesterday was like shift your mindset because I woke up in a foul mood. <laughs> Lord, help us all. <laughs> yeah, I, so I did my activation <laughs> and it was like embrace the moment, like be present. And it's just like all these like great tips and it it works. Like it really, it reminds you to be grateful, which I think is so cliche, but being grateful is like the core of everything. I mean- For me to wake up in a foul mood and be around my dogs that I love and in this house I love and being in Texas and we went to Round Top yesterday and it just completely shifted my mindset and now I do it every day and I really like it. I like, I so I haven't personally done one yet, but listening to the podcast when you guys recorded it, I really liked that she, that the whole thing is about that you can like listen to them as you're doing something else because I think what I really struggle with manifesting or not manifesting, uh, meditating is meditating and manifesting is like the stillness, which I know that's like the whole practice behind that. But like just sitting still for like 10 minutes and like not opening your eyes and not looking around and just sitting there quietly like is really hard for me. And I just, I I do get distracted. But if I can like be out on a walk and listening to these like positive, you know, things she's saying in my ear, like I think I would enjoy that a lot more and actually take away a lot more from that than yeah. just sitting (laughs) <laughs> to me, it's about mental stillness and you can achieve that doing whatever. And it's about being in the moment. So when I'm cooking and she's talking about, you know, feeling what you're doing with your hands and looking and smelling, like that really gets me in my body. And that's what I actually care about, you know? Which I feel like that's what like meditating is also. It's like the getting in your body, but you can do it different ways. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a one size fits all. A hundred percent agree. Love that. Also, I'm getting lip blushing done after this. Are you scared? Yeah. I'm kind of scared for you. (laughs) What the hell? I don't know. It freaks me out. Do you think I shouldn't do it? No. I mean, if you want to do it, do it. It just, I think I get like freaked out by lip things because I think I'll get cold sores sometimes. So like I get like, oh, I don't thought of like a needle in my lip makes me like want to die. Well, it's not going in my lip. It's like on. It's like like a tattoo on your lip. It's shading. Yeah, but it tattoos your lip. It's going in a little bit. I know. So, For context, for anyone who doesn't know lip blushing, it is basically pigment on your lips and it goes on darker than it will be. And then it peels off essentially, which I'm a bit nervous about the peeling, you know? But I have lips that were quite pigmented as a child. We've talked about that. Like my lips were very red as a kid and I like how my lips look pigmented. Like I'm putting on Benefit lip tint every single day and I hate when my lips look pale. Now that I've gotten lip filler like twice, I haven't had it done in over a year and a half, but it makes your lips paler when you have filler, I guess, because it like stretches them out or something. So I would love to have pigmented lips every day without having, it's like high maintenance to be low maintenance. Mm -hmm. It's like a lash lift and tint for your lips. Yeah, and I'm also just like a really impulsive person and I like suddenly decided I wanted lip blushing and I made the appointment and that was that. There you go. Kind of like what Megan Fox said when she w- makes a decision, she has to do it in the moment. Yeah. Like, I'm very much like that. Yes, when she said that, I was like, it, that reminded me of you. I'm so that way. Yeah. Like, literally would do the craziest thing. Meanwhile, I'm like, I need to, like, look at 8,000 reviews. Like, am I sure? What are the pros? What are the cons? That's me. That's not me. That is not me. I that's, overthink it too much. <laughs> that's why we work well. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Did you have any other updates? Uh, I mean, I feel like mine are like, I've kind of, I mean, yes, the round top, the rodeo, we've done a bunch of fun, like Austin, Texas things recently. It's so been awesome. But I feel like me like personally health wise, I've been like following my protocol with Emily. It's a lot of supplements, but like I've been trying to just stay on top of them at like a timely time through the day. You've been good about it. I have like I've been bringing, I have my little pack with me for Tuesday. I still need to take my morning ones because I needed to eat for, but I've been trying to stay on top of those. And, like, I do feel a little bit of a difference. Yeah. I definitely do. Which, like, it's only been a couple weeks. In what way? I just feel like my, like, in my, what am I trying to say? Like, my, 
digestion maybe feels a little bit better. I feel like a little less bloated than I normally do. Um, I don't know. It's still pretty early. Like, I think this is like a 90-day protocol. And like the, th- the 30, the 30, and the 30 are all a little bit different supplements. But I don't know. It's also just nice to like stick to a regimen that like I – like she explained these supplements and like what the benefits are and like – I think it's nice to like hear that and know that I'm doing that for my body. So yeah, yeah, I've been staying on top of that. Um, I've been doing a little more weightlifting. So you guys know I've talked about mode of a bunch, but like I love these workout classes I do. I did dance sculpt this morning. It was very fun. Um, but at Mari's advice, I've been trying to add a little more weightlifting back into my weekly plan. So I've been doing like two days a week again. Sometimes I do the strength app, which I love because it's just like so easy to pop open and find a quick workout. Um, Or I'll just like put together a quick little like full body, you know, bicep curls, squats, lunges, whatever it might be. Um, But it feels good. And I feel, I I definitely feel, I mean, the classes I do have little bits of weights, but they're, it's not heavy weights. And like, I do feel like keeping the strength training like does allow me to keep my muscle and like, isn't making me feel like maybe like thin, but like weak. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like a little bit of a must definition. So yeah. Yeah. I've been doing that again. And I feel good. Yeah. I think the classes are awesome and they seem really fun. Yeah. But they're definitely- you have a- to come with me. I know. Well, you don't invite me. I got to find one that like, I think you'd like. You don't like cycling really, right? Nah. Yeah. Maybe a dance sculpt. I would do a dance sculpt. It's fun. Dance sculpt or the trampoline. The music sounded fun in your story today. Yeah. Yeah, it was Courtney today. She plays really good music. Yeah. She plays good remixes. Oh, I love it. It was a stick season. She played a remix while we were doing like a leg lifts and kicks and stuff. It was really good. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I've been up to. Yeah. In terms of my skin, I'll give an mm. update on my skin. I kind of like had a come to Jesus, if you will, and realized that I know what works best for me. And I know that sounds like I'm always telling you guys that, but it's difficult to take your own advice sometimes. And I obviously have struggled with acne for so long that anytime I hear anything, like someone could tell me anything and I'll try it because I'm so done with my acne at this point. And I just got to a point where I was like, I know what cleared my skin. I'm just going to go back to that. And honestly, like simplifying, like I love extractions. I love facials, but I feel like I was getting them done too much and my skin was getting irritated I was trying things and going off things and I'm just going back to what I know and really, really simplifying and doing the sauna and doing my castor oil packs and eating well. And I feel like my skin already looks less inflamed. Um, And I'm really happy about that. And I'm just trying to be patient. And I just kind of had an epiphany the other day with my acne and I was like looking in the mirror and I was like, those aren't me. Like, I know that sounds weird, but I was like, those are just things on my face. Yeah, it doesn't, like, make you who you are. I think that's why, and I, like, I know, like, kind of the Megan Fox thing, like, it's not who you see, but, like, I think that's why when I say, like, I don't notice it, it's because, like, that that has nothing to do with who you are to me at all. I know, that but it's sense. so I, difficult when I know. it's you. When, and when you, like, see it, because you're like, this isn't me. Like, yeah. I, I don't recognize myself. I get that. But but you're right. Like, I like that that thought you had. That's a that, It was, like, it. a weird little oh, those are just like things on my face that will yeah. probably go it's, away at It's some not point. who you are. Yeah. It's just like a symptom you're having at the moment. Yeah, period. Yeah. Without further ado, oh my God, I've been listening to the toast too much. And they say, without further ado, let's hop into the fast five stories that you need to know. Oh. Anyway, without further ado, let's hop into our voice messages. Let's do it. Okay, doing voicemails. Hi, my name's Morgan. I'm currently walking on a treadmill listening to the podcast. And I love all of the different episodes and different guests that you bring on. It's one of my favorite podcasts right now. And I was just wondering, what is the best information you think you've learned from any of your guests? Thanks. Such a good question. Oh my gosh. Could literally go on forever about that. I mean, I've learned so much from all our different guests. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. I feel like my life has changed a lot since starting this podcast. Um, Overall, I mean, my most recent one was the activations from Mimi have been life-changing. I think learning about seed oils has been life-changing for me. I think um, brain health, 
from Dr. Raymond was really outstanding for me. Um, quality of food. You know, there were certain things I was practicing before meeting these guests. Oh, fertility and my cycle. I think I knew nothing about my cycle before starting the podcast, truthfully. I did not understand the luteal phase. What are the other, other phases? Follicular. Yeah. I did not understand all the different phases yeah. and how to optimize for ovulation and fertility and things I can do day to day. Also, endocrine disruptors, changing out my cleaning products, changing out makeup, fragrances. Um, I've learned so much about acne. I've learned a ton about bio-individuality and how different we all are. How about you? Yeah. All of the above that you just mentioned. But I also loved like Dr. Sarah Gottfried, how she really went into just how women's bodies are. And we've had a couple of guests on. Um, Mindy Pels, I think, talked about this. There's Dr. Another, Jolene Brighton. Dr. Yes, Dr. Jolene Brighton. A lot of guests have come on and just discussed how truly different women's bodies are because of our cycles than men mm. and that we shouldn't be doing the exact same workouts as them or eating the exact same way as them. Um, and I think as someone who's kind of been in like diet culture and, you know, had different trainers that were maybe men, having me work out a certain way and eat a certain way and me thinking like, this is what I have to do. And like, maybe I saw results, but I didn't feel great. I think that was like a really like mm -hmm. ah, aha moment that I was like, oh, like that's why. And like it's okay that maybe the week before my period, like I feel drained and like moody and I don't want to go lift really heavy weights and like I'd rather just do walking or like Pilates or something like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. And like me going to the gym and feeling like I had a bad lift because maybe I'm about to start my period, like that's normal. Yeah. And I shouldn't beat myself up about it, so. Yeah, you're right. That is a big takeaway, the yeah. the different approaches between men and women because we are so different. I feel like we take away something from every single conversation. I feel like whenever you and me are out and about in, you know, public talking to other people, we always have like random facts we know. Mm -hmm. Like every time I see Greg, what was he doing the other day where I was like, you should, oh, we, he was putting like peppermint oil on his face. And I learned that peppermint oil can shift your hormones when you're a kid. So you have to be careful with like certain essential oils. Mm. Anyway, yeah. just random things pop up in my day and I'm like, oh, I learned this about that. Yeah. So. And it's fun because I feel like even in our conversations, like we like, after she's a guest, so I'm like, we will talk about it like the rest of the day or the yeah. week, you know what I mean? No, so, we genuinely love doing this. And I feel like we've learned so freaking much. Yeah. So check those episodes out. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> also, even like, sorry, Alison Stoner and learning about the child acting industry, which is in the news right Have now. Have you watched that documentary? Quiet on set? Yeah. Not yet. Have you? I started it. I've watched the first two, I think. Oh. It's crazy. I need to watch the documentary. I just I feel like it's going to be hard to watch. I haven't finished it. It is. It's like, it's really, it's, it's really dark. Yeah. It's very dark. So, um, okay. Next one. Let's see. Hi, Marian Fee. I have followed you guys for a really long time and I really appreciate everything you do. My question comes to, I guess, mindset in a way. Um, I really want to lose weight and have more energy in my day. But in the end of the day, when I sit there and I'm really tired, then nothing seemed to help except for like starting to eat a little bit of sweets or eating an extra sandwich or something like that. Do you have any ideas on how to be less tired throughout the day and maybe what to think or do when you sit there all exhausted and just start eating things? <laughs> and thank you if you're able to answer my questions. Love you guys. Bye. Aw, she has such a cute voice. I know. You know? So cute. She kind of had like a little like Almost like an Irish accent at the end, no? I didn't notice that. Oh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> well, love the question. I'm sure Cam, by the way. Cam? Cam. I'm sure so many people can relate to that. And I know I used to be in that position. You really have to think of it in a long-term way. And it's all about the patterns you're doing day to day. So for example, you mentioned the sweets. Those are gonna also create lethargy because those are going to spike your blood sugar and then you're going to crash and feel tired and have cravings and that's going to carry into the next day and continue and continue and continue. I'm personally someone I know that after 5 p.m. I'm not doing anything active except maybe a walk with my dogs. 
I need to get all my energy out in the morning. And I think a lot of people are that way just based on cortisol patterns. So it might be a matter of waking up an hour earlier to get your workout in. Even if it's just a home workout, make it easy for yourself. Um, make the barrier to entry less difficult and you're more likely to do it. And I think if you work out in the morning, you'll feel so much more energized throughout the day. And then I always go back to nutrition. I think being really careful about the choices you're making, starting at the beginning of your day, choosing high, high protein, because you're going to feel full, you're going to feel energized, get those healthy fats. Women need healthy fats, avocado, olive oil, ghee, tallow, eggs, whatever it may be. And then, you know, if you want to have a sweet, do it at the end of the day so that if you do crash, you're going to sleep. That's how I like to handle it. Um, yeah, I think nutrition and exercise and just being careful of those, those choices because energy has everything to do with your patterns and daily habits. That was a great tip. Oh, I feel like all that was like <laughs> spot on. Okay. <laughs> Mari says it all in a very like scientific, like very intellectual way. I really appreciate it. Oh. No, you do. Like the cortisol spikes, all that. I really appreciate it. Oh. <laughs> Mine was going to be a little more like basic, but. Yours, you go no, ahead. No, that was amazing. Um, I just, I know what it's like to, I, like when I'm feeling bored or just like any emotions, like that food can really be a comfort. Um, and I think it's just kind of changing that mindset that like find, try to find other things to comfort you or maybe like when you're feeling like that, like I liked how, I think actually Sammy Spalter said this, that try doing actions of the person that you like want to be, not the person that you are in that moment. So like I've had evenings where I'm like, oh, I just want to sit on the couch and like eat and watch a show. And like maybe that's an action that will keep me where I am and keep me feeling tired and keep me not feeling great. Or I could be like, why don't I do something that's different and is not in like the cycle that Mari's talking about? And why don't I just take my dog on a walk for 15 minutes around the block? And just trying to like change those little habits, I think really leads to the bigger picture. And then like next thing you know, it'll be an evening and you're like, oh, like that was so nice doing that walk. I'm going to do that again. And it's just making those habits, I think, and the mindset shift behind it is very helpful. So good. Yeah. No, you just said that perfectly. Visualize your highest self. Mm -hmm. What would she do? Yeah. And I bet you, you're going to feel so much more confident and energized after that walk that you'll keep doing it again and again. Yeah. Showing up for yourself. That's like Period. the way. I've been trying to do that a lot, actually. Like I've had evenings where I'm just like, sitting around. I'm like, okay, this is what I've been doing every evening. So it feels comfortable. It feels normal. It feels like what I should do. Or like I can go on a walk to the lake. Yeah. Or I, I like I went down and just did a little walk on my treadmill the other day. And then like the confidence I felt from like making that different decision and not just doing what I had been doing was so nice. Yeah. And you can so, watch a show on the yeah. treadmill. Like I watched the Call Her Daddy episode. It was awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is from Josephine. Hey, Mari. Hi, Fee. I just realized I only have 60 seconds. Um, first of all, thank you so much for putting so much effort and work into your podcast. It's an amazing podcast. So helpful. Um, I look forward to every episode. I've been following you since you've been in Colorado. I'm in Colorado myself. And thank you so much. It's an amazing podcast. Um, and my question is, I've been on a post-birth control journey right now. I've been on it for 10 years, and I just didn't feel like myself anymore. I wanted to get off. So I've been off for six months. It was all fine. My cycle was fine, which was very surprising. Um, and then all of a sudden, it was not anymore. So I've been on some supplements, and my question is, how do you know if you take too much of a certain supplement? Like, is there a limit? Do I have to dig deep? deeper in that or like how do you know you take too many supplements or your body has too many supplements thank you guys mm. this is a good question and that's possible and i learned that after talking to kaylee and danielle from clear stem things like vitamin d you can actually take so much that you have a toxic overload of vitamin d because it's fat soluble oh, wow. so the best way to figure that out is lab work you want to get your blood work done, talk to a health practitioner. It doesn't have to be like a regular doctor. You know, I work with a health practitioner who looks through all my lab work, blood tests, poop tests, uh, Dutch tests to see hormones and cortisol. You can see the only way you can know what's happening in your body and what you need more of and what you need less of is by doing lab work. You can 
actually order lab work online now. I can look into that a bit more. I know ClearSTEM has a panel, but that's specifically for acne. I would look online and see what you can find and find someone to read your lab work because that's the only way you can really know. And the lab work will tell you if you're in range, out of range, and you want to do it based on like optimal levels, not average, because average is not optimal in America. Yeah. And I also would say like, I would always try to get lab work done and like work with a professional. I know it can be a bit expensive, but like there are options out there. Even if you can go see kind of a naturopath or a functional yeah. and doctor once just so you know that you're not taking too much and like always read the dosage on the bottle like you don't want to overdo anything what's the name of the holistic practitioner that Alyssa and sammy are using right now that's like uh, uh parsley no it's a new one it's called like morel um at, with the seed cycling that they do oh i don't know i kind of want to find out because i feel like that's a good recommendation I will find out, guys, and I will put it in the show notes and ask Sammy because I feel like that's a great way. It's not like one person, it's a group. And I feel like that's more affordable. Yeah. Cool. Love that. Okay. One more. Hi, Mari. Hi, Fee. My name is Catalina. I'm a registered nurse in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, love listening to girls. And I have a question. I just recently purchased a house, so I'm in the process of moving We've got two little girls and I'm trying to incorporate all of my wellness while we move, while we unpack. And it's obviously not the easiest thing ever. And since you two just kind of went through this, any tips to just be able to really focus on myself? Um, you know, as a mom, I'm always giving and as a wife, but with this moving thing, it's it's like I really need to focus on wellness for myself while I move. So any tips would be appreciated. Thank you. I love that question. And I feel like that applies to anything in life, whether your career is crazy or you're just really busy or you're traveling, whatever it may be. I feel like it's a balance between efficiency and flexibility. Hear me out. You can achieve a lot in 30 minutes, genuinely. I think people have a perception that you need to go to the gym for an hour or more. You don't. You can go and get your heart rate up and do a bunch of supersets. Supersets are when you pair exercises. So let's say you did a squat and an RDL, you would do that back and forth. If you're doing that, lunges, jump squats, maybe it's a full body situation. 30 minutes is perfect. Maybe you take your girls and do a lap around the block and get a walk in, or you go play with them outside and just do some jumping jacks, make it efficient, and then get back to what you need to do. And time it that way so that you're able to fit it in the day, but also having flexibility. For example, I didn't work out the past two days because I was horseback riding Sunday. We went to Round Top yesterday. And usually I'd never take two days off. But in my head, I was like, this is a rare occasion. This probably won't happen again for a while. And just being okay with it in my head. Because, you know, there's seasons of life where you're not able to be 100% all the time. It's about the bounce back rate. How quickly can you get back on routine? Yeah, love that. Yeah, got to give yourself grace. Very important. Give yourself um, grace. Yeah. And then even like finding a home, I know the strength app has home workouts. You can buy for 20 bucks on Amazon, a dumbbell, like a set of dumbbells and crank out a 15, 20 minute workout at home, like with your girls, like have them watch you do it and hang out with, you know, watch a show. And like, I know these walking pads are like a huge trend right now. I think Amazon has really affordable ones. Mm. Grab a walking pad. If you like, maybe you live, I don't know what the weather's like. Oh, it's for a lot of you. You could walk outside, but <laughs> go on a walk or grab a walking pad. And like, while your girls are watching a show and you, maybe you have to be watching them and dad's out, be on your walking pad for 30 minutes. There's definitely ways to kind of work around it. Um, I don't have children. I'm not saying it's easy. I, I really don't know, but there's definitely little hacks you can kind of do to, yeah. to yeah, feel like and, you're still taking care of yourself while you also have these other responsibilities. Yeah, and good for you for even having the intention of doing yeah. so. Like, that's the first step. Yeah. So. Love it. Congrats on your new house, babe. Amazing. Well, guys, I think that is the conclusion of this Mari and Fee episode. We hope you loved it. Any final words? No. Great. Love it. Great, great and love it. Great. <laughs> guys. Don't forget um, to check out the Strength app. I feel like we mentioned it a couple of times in this episode. You can download it on the App Store. It's all of my workout plans, things I've been doing from the beginning and all my favorite recipes. You can buy Bloom at bloomnew.com. 
We have our greens, many different flavors. We also have just some really exciting new products coming. We've been sampling for the past two weeks and oh, you I'm guys. I'm so excited, you guys. Like I, I'm bursting to tell everyone about it, but I can't yet. But once once it's out, I think they're going to be shocked. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's going to be incredible. There's many, many things coming, so stay tuned for Bloom. And don't forget to subscribe and follow the show. It helps us a ton, helps us continue growing. Leave a review if you enjoyed it, and we appreciate your support so, so much. We'll see you on Monday. Yeah, bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us on the Pursuit of Wellness podcast. To support this show, please rate and review and share with your loved ones. If you want to be reminded of new episodes, click the subscribe button on your preferred podcast or video player. You can sign up for my newsletter to receive my favorites at marilewellen.com. It will be linked in the show notes. This is a Wellness Out Loud production produced by Drake Peterson, Fiona Attics, and Kelly Kyle. This show is edited by Mike Fry, and our video is recorded by Luis Vargas. You can also watch the full video of each episode on our YouTube channel at Mari Fitness. Love you, pal girls and pal boys. See you next time. The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team.